Praise God. Welcome, people of God, to the to our platform. This is a leadership platform where we're treating a lot of things concerning the body of Christ, the church uh, of God. Hallelujah. Uh, so today we are going to be having uh, this topic that we are going to develop is concerning the uh, the rebirth of the evangelical ministry, the rebirth of the evangelical ministry, because years ago we saw a lot of evangelists and we saw many things, the revival that happened. And then what happened is in our generation, we don't see many evangelists anymore. So we want to have uh, this meeting trying to find out why and what must be done for the revival ministry of evangelists to come back. So we're going to have uh, Hugo Shuko, uh, apostle from Nigeria on our platform. And uh, so myself as evangelist and himself as evangelist, and also we operating also in the grace of apostolic. So we're going to be uh, treating this subject today and I want you to don't go anywhere and to just wait for us wherever you are until the apostle show up uh, so it's gonna connect very very soon and then we going to be treating this uh, subject hallelujah welcome welcome everybody that is watching us God bless you God bless you yeah, so this meeting is going to start just now, now, as we are waiting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reke Boshika. Yeah. Um. Oh, Rabashika, hallelujah. We thank God for this wonderful time. We thank God for this wonderful time we are going to have today. Um, it's going to be a, a blessing for us. It's going to be a blessing for the body of Christ. It's going to be a time of refreshing, a time of revival, a time of great things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Rekabashika. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shikarabasente. Yeah, so. Uh, as we are waiting for the man of God to show up from uh, Lagos, so we are going to be treating the rebirth of the evangelist ministry because uh, in our generation now there is few evangelists, very, very few, that we are seeing around. And we trust in God to see bigger revival taking place recaba chanto robosente hallelujah so we trust in god to see a bigger move of the spirit after this lockdown we trust in god to see a huge revival in the body of christ and there cannot be huge revival on the absence of evangelist so I mean, those are the people God have given uh, the grace for revival. 
and uh, you know every ministry complete each other and there is different grace and the teachers have received the grace to grow the people in the faith in the spirit and the revival have been given to the evangelist so that's why we are trying to speak about the rebirth of the evangelist ministry praise god Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're still waiting for uh, the apostle to show up. Uh, the apostle. The apostle. Don't know why this thing takes time. Praise God. Uh, yes, God. Welcome. We've been waiting. Waiting. Hallelujah. We thank God for this wonderful time. Amen. Man of God, how are you? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay, Apostle. God bless you. Good to see you. <laughs> yes, yes. Nice to see you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How's, uh, how's uh, Nigeria, Lagos? Oh, Nigeria. Nigeria is doing quite awesome. Nigeria is okay. Yeah. Oh, really? And, and, what, and what about you? Yeah, we're doing well. It is very cold uh, right now in Cape Town. Very cold. Wow, wow, wow. I, I, I miss the Cape uh, seriously. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, this is a better time to, to miss it because of the cold. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Cold. Amen. Is where is where I I trust God to be there after the after the the, the stay at home the lockdown. Uh, after the yeah yeah definitely. Yeah, and, yeah uh, we are also uh, waiting to also waiting to receive you in Nigeria also. Amen, amen. I was supposed to be there the week the lockdown started. Yes, yes. You told me. You told me. Yeah, yeah. So we we all waiting. Amen. Mm. Amen. Okay, Amen. so welcome, men of God. Uh, I want us to have a debate. So it's more a debate. There is a subject that is in my heart, and uh, I really choose you because I really feel like we think we're doing the same thing, you know. And uh, whatever I'm doing, I see you also doing, and we're doing similar things. We have a similar calling, and so I just I believe that. Uh, we can tell the world about the, the gift of evangelist. Mm -hmm. And because my question is, a uh, uh, few years back, if you look in the 90s, there were a lot more evangelists than pastor or any other mm -hmm. gift. Mm -hmm. And so at the moment, as we're talking now, there is very, very few evangelists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there is very, very few evangelists. So... I want us to debate so that the world can see what is the reason that there is few evangelists and how can we get evangelists back on, uh, on field because I know that the revival goes with the gift of evangelists. So mm. my concern here is where are the evangelists? Are they mm. somewhere who God is not calling evangelists anymore? So... So that's the the main subject. So we're gonna be just talking around it. Okay. Yeah, so I want okay. to know hear from you. What do you yeah. see about this situation? Oh, praise God, praise God. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, man of God. Uh, I I sincerely appreciate uh, this uh, ample opportunity. 
Uh, Amen. And uh, honestly, for God to have laid this in your heart, uh, simply means uh, that uh, Jesus is about to do a new thing and a great thing in this season. Amen. Amen. Uh, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I think uh, even while I was still in the Cape, you know, uh, yes. before I relocated back to Nigeria, uh, I have always seen the hand of God upon you. I've always seen you, you know, even before we met in Metland, uh, yeah. I have always watched you from afar while you were somewhere in Sea Point or something like that, you know? Yes, 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 uh, Sea yeah, that, that was Yeah, that was when I knew that uh, you are an evangelist, you are an apostle. I mean, you are a core evangelist, you know, uh, 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 with the gift of healing. So yes. uh, I knew very much about that. And uh, when you started telling me your encounters with the Lord, uh, yes. I was not surprised about it. And in fact, what was happening to you was also happening to me. That's the problem. Yeah, That's yeah the exactly. Problem. So, exactly. So, I'm so happy that uh, we are connecting back here again uh, to, to, to discuss and to re strategize for a mighty move of God, especially after mm. the lockdown. Because Amen. Uh, Amen. A, a lot has happened in the lockdown. So, let me go straight to the point, sir. Uh, mm. Yeah, the, 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 the question you ask, yes. yeah, the, 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 yeah, the question you ask, uh, uh, about the evangelists and uh, all of those stuff. I think uh, God, God have never, God has never. Yes. God has never run short of materials. Now, the Bible said that when Jesus is lifted up, he will draw men unto himself. Now, Amen. now he said to the church that God has given the gift of the apostle, yeah. of yes. the prophet, of the evangelist, yeah. the teacher, and the pastor. Now, yeah. you ask a question, where are the evangelists, whether there are no more evangelists, or we are running short of them, or God is no longer calling evangelists. Yeah. Now, as long as the kingdom of God is still on the earth, yeah. as long as we are still praying for the imminent return of our mm. master Jesus, Yes. There is no way the fivefold ministry will go yeah. into disintegration. Yeah. Because the five offices, the office of the prophet, the office of the apostle, the evangelist, the teacher, the pastor, the Bible said that these five offices is for the edification of the church. Amen. Praise God. They are for the edification of the church. So there mm -hmm. is no way that God who is aware that his son Jesus is coming back and God yeah. will be silent or refuses to produce or release this fivefold ministry? Amen. Now, as long as the kingdom of God cannot be short of prophets, as long yeah. as there are still prophets in this time and season, as long as mm -hmm. there are still prophets or apostles in this time and season, as long as there are still pastors pastoring churches, there is yeah. no way we can be short of evangelists. Amen. Now, to go, to go straight to the point, the question you ask, the problem I see is that if there are prophets and apostles, there are also evangelists, but the problem yes. is that in this time and in this generation we live in, I think yes. people has, especially the evangelists, the evangelists yeah. somehow have concluded that maybe the pastors, God is blessing them more, or the okay. apostles, or the okay. prophets, they are yeah. prophesying, so God is blessing them more. So yes. there is no need of, there is no need of wasting time going into the yes. field, looking for That's souls. So, so it's yeah. better we retire in the church yeah. and open churches and begin to pastor. We are by people, we bring, bring their tithes and their offering. But Amen. evangelists, I must tell you this, it's not all about, it's not all about ourselves, it's not all about our yes. belly, it's not all about our personal person in this yes. world, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. It's all about Jesus. So the evangelists are still there, but I believe most of them are wrongly placed. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I believe... Uh, that's what you are touching now what I wanted you really to touch. I wanted to know because uh, the, when I'm talking about shortage, 
I mean like a really big one because in our generation, uh, there is one situation that if somebody call himself evangelist, the meaning of the word evangelist, it become like a junior minister, junior minister, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. you, you, when you say you are evangelist, they see you a junior, you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, isn't it bad, for, you know, because in my case, I'm evangelist. I've been 30 years, you see what I mean, in the Lord. So I don't see myself as a junior. But That's right. isn't, isn't that the problem that make people to change themselves and find other title that maybe is convenient. Maybe they call themselves other title, but maybe his calling is evangelist. So I'm trying to say like, as a coach, if I'm a coach here, what happens is uh, uh, you have to place people at the right place, you know, mm -hmm. for your team to be better. And now it's like, the, is, isn't it like the, the, the evangelist have, have moved from where they're supposed to be into other ministries. Okay. And okay. also on the absence of evangelists, there is no, because the ministry of evangelists, you have to be without a church so that you can actually speak the truth. But when you, be, you, you have a church, you know, evangelists, somebody made, God made them to be free. It is that lightness, that freedom, that make them to speak, you know? Because when, when you are a pastor, maybe you're looking for nice words, but evangelists tell you this is sin. But in the body of Christ, there is few people who can confront sin in our days. It's more like trying to make everything, yes, we know it's sin, but we're looking for other words to, to talk about it. Be mm -hmm. So I, I, that's what I was saying. Uh, why the evangelist? Do you think they are still evangelists, but they are in the wrong position? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Uh, praise God! Praise God! Uh, 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 evangelist uh, George, I'm getting so excited about this topic. You know, uh, Amen. Uh, before Amen. then, I have to yeah, I have to uh, use this ample opportunity to welcome uh, a great man of God. Uh, 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 Prophet Tochuku from Johannesburg is online. Uh, I have a friend. I have a friend also, uh, Apostle Satyampuram, all the way from Guyana, uh, South America. I also have Amen. a Apostle Mike Oji from Cape Town. Amen. He's a beloved servant of God. Yeah, I have one Amen. of my daughters, uh, uh, Minister Zandile uh, Nkambidi from Johannesburg. Also, I welcome every one of them and uh, every other every other person online. God today, a ministry is the problem. A ministry is the problem. Wrong, wrong placement. Okay. The problem of wrong placement wrong and placement. alignment. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the book of in the book of Ezekiel thirty seven. Now, yeah. this was uh, this was two thousand and uh, this was two thousand and uh, I think two thousand and fourteen. I was in South Africa. Man yes. of God, I will tell you, before you met me in Metland, before I left that hall in Metland, yeah. I went to Peru, who took over the hall. I had yeah. an encounter with God, whereby you build the church and build the church, the church will be full, full to yeah. the brim, you know, people are coming. Now, when yeah. you are relaxing, thinking the church has grown to a point, you see the church begin to diminish again. Yeah. Now, the church in Maryland started decreasing. I know when the church was hitting 300, you know, the church started yes. coming. Out. I went into prayers and in search of the word. I wanted to know what is God saying. Man yes. of God, God said to me, audibly, in my quest to know and fire yeah. the word, God said to me, son, I have never called you as a pastor from the beginning. Amen, amen, amen. Praise he God. said to me, I have never called you to settle with the people as a pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, he said to me, he said to me, he said, I think that was December, that was December of that, that was December of, uh, of 2013, entering yeah. January of 2014. Then, okay. he took me to this word, that was Ezekiel 37, from yes. verse 1. And Ezekiel said, and I was in the spirit and mm. the spirit took me into a valley of bones. Yes. When I got into the valley of bones, 
and I mm. saw dry bones. And yeah. I had the Lord say to me, Ezekiel, what yeah. say yes that? What say yes that? Ezekiel said, Lord, I see dry bones. And the Lord yes. said, prophesy. Then Ezekiel yeah. said, as I prophesy, I saw dry bones. They stood yeah. up. He said, there was a mighty wind that blew. There was a revival that took place in the valley of bones. And the Bible yeah. said, every bone came back. Every bone stood up and had yeah. flesh and stood yeah. up as an exceeding great army. Amen. Now, when I was going through that encounter, the Lord said to me, why was the boat, now, now, now man of God, yeah? Oh, yes, sir. For those who are following, we are busy talking about the evangelist ministry. There is, uh, I'm busy with the man of God, uh, uh, Hugo Shuko from uh, from uh, from uh, Nigeria, Lagos. So we are busy treating this uh, because uh, I'm evangelist and the man of God they uh, is also evangelist. Now, so we are busy t t talking about this because we are living in a time where uh, we don't see as many evangelists all around, and we are trying to find out what is going on so while we are waiting for uh yugo shuko uh, from from nigeria i am going to be going on and uh he was on right now and he's gone off we believe that he's gonna rejoin again the meeting so that we can discuss about uh why there is few evangelists so while we are waiting i'm carrying on yeah, the problem is in the 90s, when we came to the Lord, I believe there were so many uh, evangelists. I believe young Christians like me in the 90s, when we came, all we wanted to be is evangelists. Because the evangelists, they were people of fire. God was using them powerfully. And uh, they were very, uh, you know, people on fire. They were charismatic. So we were attracted to be evangelists. And... Uh, now, the body of Christ went into a season, I believe, from 2019, uh, 92, 93, the dominant ministry was evangelist. They, so so in, from 2010, uh, the movement of pastors came in, and I believe there were shift taking place. Most of evangelists start to become pastors, start to become pastors. And uh, also, I believe that what happened is that... Uh, uh, all of a sudden, the world decided that when you are evangelist, you are a young believer. Because mostly it was youth, you know, that were having that uh, gifting. And also, uh, previously, there were so many mistakes as well that some of the evangelists made. Mistakes in such that uh, some of the evangelists, uh, they were traveling all, all, of the, all over the place. Some were, were following women wherever they're going because they were always attractive and popular and God was using them powerfully. You know, when you are evangelist, you have the gift of healing, miracles, signs and wonders. And sometimes you get attractive. So if you are young, you are not married and I believe you, you get that influence and then you don't know what to do. You are almost like a, an artist, like a musician. And so basically some of the, 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 the evangelists, they did not have the maturity and they start to following women and whatever. So there was some kind of abuse. And uh, so with that abuse, uh, what happened with that abuse is that uh, we, with, yes, I'm bringing the man of God back. I'm bringing the man of God back. Continue with where we started yeah so with that abuse so then the absence of evangelists hit the place so then they became very very few evangelists around 2010 to 2020 uh, we had a lot more pastors when we reached to toward end of 2020s most of pastors start to move into apostle or bishop you become two way either you choose apostle either you choose bishop now my concern i'm talking about this thing not like they are from me they are from god 
God gave me a vision about the body of Christ. I saw the body of Christ. And since that day, I saw this vision. This is the vision. God showed me a woman standing in the sky. And that woman, first, before God showed me the, the, the vision, he first showed me in the vision, the sky was full of the map, the Atlantis. Uh, the Atl you know, the map covered the whole the whole sky, you know, it was beautiful with the sea, the land, and uh, and everything, the island, everything it was so beautiful. When I was attracted to it, I want to take a photo. The photo refused to be taken. Then I ran quickly in the house and I took my nice camera so I can take that photo because I was so badly wanted that photo. It was amazing to see. And when I came back, I found the woman in the sky, and the size of that woman really intimidated me. The woman's size fooled the whole sky. The whole sky was, the whole map was covered. One woman, I mean, I, I, I look at her, if she was an angel, I said, no, it's not even an angel. She doesn't look like an angel. And it was a pure person, normal person, you know. And, and then the Lord said to me, look at this woman. And I look at that woman in the eyes, and I saw the woman was not right. The woman was like somebody that was found in the seed, half dead, you know. And uh, so basically what happened from that is uh, uh, then the Lord showed me there, were, there is problems in the body of Christ. Because that woman God showed me is the image of the, the body of Christ, what we call the, the body of Christ, what we call Christian. Christian are... Uh, 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 we are in front of God. We are not churches. We are not names. All these names we have now is to identify each, each other, you know, where you belong and all that. But in front of God, we just one woman, one person, the bride of Christ. That's how God sees us. He doesn't see us congregation. No, God sees us. God showed me a one woman, not two, not three, but one in the sky. She fooled the whole map. And I was asking myself, who's this woman? God showed me in the book of uh, Revelation. You will see they're talking about a woman. Amen. And so I want to tell you right now, hallelujah. Oh, God bless you, my wife, for this coffee. I want to tell you right now, since that moment, God told me to leave my church and to preoccupy myself with the body of Christ. You know, if you don't know, I, I, God made me to close my church. I refuse to do that, you know, but God closed it by himself. And, and you know, it's a long story. You can send me a message on, on Messenger, I will explain. But there were no sin, there were no bad, we were, there were nothing wrong. God just said, close the church and preoccupy yourself with the body of Christ. Now, when I sit, I just get vision coming to me, revelation, how the body of Christ must look like. And, and, and we are treating here right now about uh, the ministry of evangelists. Now, when they, in the absence of the evangelist, sin entered in the church, in the church that we call the body of Christ. Sin entered in the, in the, in the body of Christ in the absence of the evangelist. Because I'll tell you right now that because evangelists, evangelist that God has power to rebuke sin. They are doing it not against hatred. Uh, welcome again. Welcome back, man of God. Welcome back. So on your absence, I was just explaining yeah, yeah. the whole ministry of evangelists. So yeah. the evangelists, they are called yeah, I was to, yeah, the evangelists, they are called to rebuke sin, you know. So for them to do that, mm. they must not have engagement, you see. So God does not want evangelists to be attached to people. Because when you attach to people, it becomes difficult to tell them something when they are wrong, you see. Now, God wants uh, mm. evangelists mm. to be moving around, you know. Because sometimes if you're a pastor, you know, when you're a pastor, you eat on sin. Most It, it brings division. Because people say, my pastor know my problem. Today he was preaching about me. You understand? So it, it, mm -hmm. instead of it building up, it destroys. Because say, you see, I told mm -hmm. my pastor the problem. And you see, on Sunday he's preaching about me, you know. 
But evangelists, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, made, God made the evangelists to go everywhere and talk because you don't know the people, you don't have a feeling for them, they, you, you don't know what they did yesterday or last month, you just rebuke, you just correct it, and you move on, you know? And the pastor come, he covers, he covers those who were wounded, he covers, he covers. So I think God have done it in an ordained way. This one come to correct, this one come to, to, to rebuild, you know? But so we are talking, yeah. yes, men of God. So I want you to tell us, what do you think the evangelist uh, uh, went to start the churches, you know? Uh, just tell us as you've been following us. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, when I was, uh, when, we, when the transmission had a little uh, problem, I was still following up. Uh, yeah, thank you for uh, what the impact you have made already. Yeah, I think uh, it's very glaring. Now, uh, where I quoted before in Ezekiel 37, I said the problem of the kingdom of God today yeah. is the problem of wrong placement, Amen. wrong alignment. Now, yes. what we are discussing, sir, is not only limited to the evangelist. Okay. It's almost in every office, in this fivefold office. Yeah. Some are called as pastors. They are functioning as prophets. Some yeah. are called as prophets. They are functioning as teachers. So yeah. that's Ezekiel. Ezekiel said, now, when I prophesied, there was a mighty rushing wind in the mm. valley, which I tell me to be, which I tell me to be revival. Now he said, every dry bone in the valley, they got flesh and they stood yeah. up as an exceeding mighty army. Now, sir, when I got to this scripture, my encounter with the Lord, I think that was January 2014. And the Lord said to me, son. You are in a wrong placement. Okay. And I say, how? He said, mm. from the church, from yeah. the church where you were raised, mm. from the church where you were raised, your mm. father, your spiritual father, ordained you as a pastor under the church. And you have pastored from Nigeria, from the yeah. eastern part of Nigeria, down to the western part of Nigeria, Lagos, before I came over to South Africa. And the Lord yeah. said to me, your father ordained you a pastor. But he said to me that your assignment is not pastoral. Your assignment yes. is evangelistic. Amen. Amen. Now, I started having that encounter. And God said to me, the worst thing that can happen to any man choosing of God is to be wrongly placed. Yes, that's true. Mm. Now, Apostle Paul was addressing his son, Timothy. He was yes. talking to Timothy from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. He said to Timothy, he said, do the work of an evangelist. Mm, of an evangelist, yes. Now, 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 now what, mm. what I'm saying, the problem of the kingdom of God today is the problem of wrong placement. It is. Yeah. So we are called as teachers. Yeah. Now, we must separate the ministry of the evangelist from the ministry, from the gift of an evangelist. Now, now somebody may have the gift of prophecy. Now, Apostle, could you imagine... I went yeah. to a church in Nigeria. I went to a yeah. church in Nigeria where I went to preach. Yeah. Before the man of God called, before the man of God called me to the altar, he said, "Church, stand up. Let's welcome Prophet Ugo Wise." Okay, that you last a time he said, yeah. "Yes, he called me a prophet," and the church was <laughs> clapping. The the yeah. ovation was very hard. He now said, you "Last time he was obliged to prophesy." Now. <laughs> That's right. Now, he said, let's welcome Prophet Ugo said Last time he was here, he yeah. called out a man that there, is, that there is a man who is a truck driver. When the man, the truck driver came out, he told yeah. the man that there is a projection of death through accident mm. on him. And yeah. he prayed and gave the man some fasting to do. And he left. Could you yeah. imagine that few months later, the tanker driver was sent by his master from a portacot to Lagos to fetch some, some petrol. And the yeah. brother refused and told his ogre, excuse me, sir, I'm not going because I'm not fit. The, ogre, the, the, the boss persuaded me you must go. The man said, no, I'm not bodily strong. And the boss was angry and sent another guy in the office who somehow was fighting for a position in the same office. Yeah. So, so this other guy, out of excitement, thought he has fallen in love with the bus and drove the tanker driver, went to Lagos, 
On his way coming back, he ran into an accident and he died. Hmm. So when I came to that church the second time, the man of God said, let's celebrate prophet Hugo. He prophesied to a man about accident and death Whoa. last time. And okay. it happened okay. and God delivered it. Now, okay. sir, the ministry of the ministry of a prophet. Yes. I am an evangelist. Yeah. I may have an operate in the I may operate in the gift of prophecy. But yes. that doesn't make me a prophet. I am not a prophet. Yes. I yes. operated in the gift of a prophet, but I don't have the office of a prophet. My office is the evangelistic ministry or perhaps yes. the apostolic ministry. So yes. it would be very wrong of me to accept to be a prophet yeah. because I prophesy. That is totally wrong. So, sir, yeah. to, to round it up, the problem we have in the kingdom today yeah. is because a lot are wrongly placed. Because yeah. they misplace the gift of God with the ministry they have received from the Lord. He said, let every man abide in the same calling wherewith he is called of God. So yeah. the problem was that the bones we are in the valley. Now, the yeah. bones we are in the valley, sir. Could you tell me that the rain, there was no water in the valley? There was water in the valley. Yeah. Anytime the rain falls, the, yeah. rain, the rain also goes down to the valley. There was rain in the valley. There was water in the valley. There were grasses in the valley. There was yeah. life. There was bread. There was oxygen in the valley. But why was the bone in the valley still dry? In the yeah. midst of simplicity, in the midst of abundance, there was bread. There was oxygen. There was air. There was uh, herbs. There was fruits. There was water. Yet the bone was dry. And the Lord said to me, son, no matter how you struggle, no matter yeah. how you want to make a smith, no matter how you fast and pray, it cannot happen in a wrong office. And yeah. the Lord said, is yeah. it a professor? And when he prophesied, the boss got revival. They stood yeah. up out of the valley. And the Bible said, outside the valley, the dry boss became an exceeding mighty army. So in a nutshell, to wrap it up, the problem of the 21st century church Alignment, wrong placement, a yes. prophet. Wrong placement. Yeah. An evangelist taking the office of a prophet, whereby the Lord has called him to be in the field. Of course, there are evangelists. But the problem we are facing today that so many evangelists have retired to the church. Yeah. So many evangelists have decided to build cathedral, no longer mm. building people, no longer raising souls for Jesus. So yeah. many evangelists have retired to the church because of the sake of taking offering and tithe, whereby souls are dying out there. So I, I will stop here, sir, to hear okay. from people. Okay, man of God. Now, we are talking yes, about the rebirth of the evangelical ministry. The rebirth of the evangelical ministry. So we are going now to move into ways how we can get evangelists back. Because last year, the Lord started to tell me to start calling evangelists that went into refuge. I call it refuge. So some went to refuge as a pastor, a refuge as a prophet, refuge as an apostle, refuge as a bishop, you know. Now, yeah. the problem here is like we identify what, what caused the evangelist is first of all, in the body of Christ, we want to know where the you know, this mentality of if somebody say evangelist, it must be treated like a young believer, you know. And and also uh, the evangelist moved because they want to security, you see, because when you were pastor, you have a security because you have your church, you know. So it's not just for money of your own life, but it's just a security as well. Like place where you can minister, place where you can uh, you can also be loved as a person uh, is, is a backup. Yeah. You know? Now, because of those needs, a lot of evangelists felt like, let me have a church, because if I have a church, I will preach every Sunday. And there is a lot uh, of things with evangelical ministry. So, for instance, you have to get invitation to go preach somewhere, and most of pastors, they don't open their church to another person. You understand? As a, as a evangelist, sometimes 
you don't know where to go preach. And all those things, there is many factors that made that people left the evangelist ministry, you know. So I've kind of given some of them. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not just like they're looking for money for, for eating, but there is this reality. Like you also want to preach, you know what I mean? But if you have a church, you can preach every Sunday. But if you are evangelist, you don't have a church, sometimes you don't know where to preach, you see? And so how do you solve those problems? Sometimes sometime even you have to do events. You know, one of the, the evangelists flow nicely on events. But those events, they are not supported. You know what I mean? You don't know how to raise money because you have to hire a building. You have to fly. You have to travel. You know, there's a lot of reality that goes with the evangelist ministry. But when yeah, he's yeah. seeing his calling, there is a lot of glory that cover the, 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 what he's doing. But now the thing is, can we solve those issues? What can evangelists do? You know, so I've raised up some okay. issues. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I, I have to respond to your question. I have to respond to three things. Uh, first, number one, yeah. uh, so the office of the evangelist, the office that is uh, more of uh, being raw. Yeah. Most evangelists are very raw. Raw in the sense that they proclaim Jesus as he is. They proclaim the gospel as it is. Yeah. They don't do any gimmicks. They don't look at faces. Yes, the Bible yes, says, yes. for God is no respect of persons. Now, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, the problem why some people or churches don't longer invite evangelists more is because yeah. most evangelists, most evangelists, some, ev some evangelists, not all, some evangelists are not well mature to handle okay. people. Okay. Now, sir, you, you, had, you have a church in Cape Town. Yeah. I also pastored in Cape Town. Now, yeah. I come to realize to mm. every evangelist God will take far. He will first allow you to have experience of the flaw. Okay. Now, what kind of if you watch somebody like if you watch somebody like Evangelist Rehabonke, Rehabonke yeah. Rehabonke arrived South Africa before Rehabonke arrived South Africa. When he arrived South Africa, right from Germany, he arrived South Africa. He was somehow engaged in a church where he was pastoring. Mm. Rehabonke was yeah, Rehabonke true. was pastoring. Yes. Exactly. Rehabonke has some knowledge and experience about the floor. Amen. He knew Amen. how expensive, he knew how costly a soul is. So Amen. after he has pastored some people, and the Lord now told him, I didn't call you as a pastor. And the Lord revealed to him about Africa washed in the blood of the Lamb yes. from Cape yes. to Cairo. He yes. resigned as a pastor and went yes. fully into his evangelistic ministry. Now, um, if you yes. watch somebody also, I also know about uh, some evangelists, some gospel fathers and evangelists in my country. You come to discover any evangelist that doesn't know the worth of a soul, that yes. have never had what it means to pastor or preside over a group of people as a pastor, yes. most times you invite them to your churches, you are at risk. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 you are at risk. Yeah, you are at risk. In the sense that they don't understand the worth of a soul. I mean, they are, an evangelist is very wrong. But yeah, it okay, is always okay, good for an evangelist. Yeah, it's always good for an evangelist to be experienced and mature, to know when to be wrong, and also know when to, I mean, to present the love of God. You can't Amen. be so wrong. Amen. You can't be so wrong. You know, even, yeah. even preaching the gospel of Jesus, you have to apply wisdom. You can't yeah. see a sinner now. You tell a sinner, you will die. You are going to hell. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, the yeah, sinner yeah, will go. Yeah, yeah. the, the gospel yeah. of Jesus is the gospel mm. of love. For Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so that whosoever that believes in him shall be saved. Even though that the evangelist is a raw personality, yet the presentation yeah. of the gospel will be full of love. Amen, 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 amen. Right, right. right. I, I don't think, I think Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus is the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. Jesus Amen. is an evangelist. Jesus is a prophet. Jesus is a teacher. Jesus is a pastor. But sir, could you imagine that on the cross, on the cross of Calvary, there were yeah. two armed robbers. One of them did as if he doesn't care. And the other one said, 
Uh, uh, why are you talking to this man this way? And he yes. says, sir, forget my friend. And Jesus looked at the robber and said, because you acknowledge me as a master, you acknowledge me as the yeah. son of God. So then yeah. you shall be with me in paradise. You shall be with me in my father's kingdom. Now, if Amen. you want that scripture, Jesus didn't give chance for the arm robber to confess his sin. Only yeah. that he acknowledged, he believed and yeah. acknowledged that Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Automatically, Jesus said, today, you will be with me in my father's mansion, in my father's kingdom. That Amen. was love. Yeah. That was yeah. love. Yeah. So Very most good. churches sometimes are afraid to invite itinerary or, or I, I don't know how to call it, freelander evangelists. Okay. Evangelists okay. without experience, evangelists that have never had experience of shepherding over a over plus, whether they are one or two. They are afraid so that they don't scatter their church. Okay, okay, okay. Now, okay, but so secondly, yeah. Yes, sir. So another question you asked, sir. I had an encounter with God, and that is what I am now. Since January this year, the, the church I'm pastoring in Abuja now. Could you imagine I left South Africa? I came back to Nigeria. I know what the Lord has told me to do. But sir, when yeah. I got to Nigeria, a lot of my pastor's friends started calling me. They said, man of God, you have the grace. You have pastored churches. You have pastored branch churches under your spiritual father. You can do it. You can, you can set up a church base. Honestly, sir. Do you know that when I arrived at Abuja, I started doing my meetings, my revival meetings. Yeah. Sir, I mean hotels. I mean conference halls we are packed. I saw conference halls packed. I saw hotel auditorium packed. I yeah. saw places packed, but yeah. I was deceived. Some were... friend pastors started telling me, man of God, you have the grace. You, you, okay. you have pastor before. You can pastor a church. Sir, I was lured into setting up a church base. Okay, okay. I started a church base. That was 2018. And honestly, yeah. sir, I went through, I went through, I went through hard experiences. That was okay. December last year, December 2019. And I had the Lord in our five hours prayer. As I was walking into the auditorium of the church with my wife, I had the Lord say to me, son, I didn't call you as a pastor. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord said to me, look for a pastor and put here. Look for a pastor and hand over this place and mm. move into the field. I have called you as a, as a field evangelist, not to pastor yes. the church. Yes. For this one you planted, I will not yeah. tell you to close it, but hand it over to a pastor who will pastor it right from, from, the, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the head. You can oversee him, but yeah. leave it for him to pastor and move yeah. into the field. Sir, what the Lord told me in December, I put it into practice. December, in January this year, I had the most, the most blissful, I mean the most successful crusade hey. I have never had in my life in Abuja. Wow. The crusade, the, the, the open ground was packed. People, I, I was asking myself, where are people coming from? We are back yeah. in the church. I pastor, you do, mm -hmm. you do, you do flyer, you spread flyer, you invite yeah. people. You know, the teaching was there, the, 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 the deliverance, the healing was there. But yes, it's like you are begging people to come to church. But immediately I said, Lord, I am ready. My, my wife, my wife is more pastoral. My wife is more a pastor. I okay. told my wife, I said, okay, you be here, take care of the people. I went into the evangelism full time in January, sir. It yeah, was yeah. amazing. Amen. In March, also, we did another open air to say it was, it was, I mean, it was, I it was it. explosive. The, the city it. was shaked. Amen. The Amen. city was shaked. People were yeah. back. I saw people give their life to Jesus. There were a lot of moves of God. What am, I, what am I talking? What I saw in January and March, sir, nobody can deceive me into sitting at a place again to pastor a group of people. Now, the problem is for every evangelist, for, yes, for every evangelist out there, if God has called you as an evangelist, stop yeah. waiting for churches to invite you. Mm, 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 mm. Sir, by the, great, by the grace of God, I'm one of the partners to Benham Ministries. And while in Cape Town, every month I have a particular seat. I yeah. saw to Dr. Ben Him ministry. You know, as the Lord blesses me, 10,000 around, 9,000 around, I do as much as the Lord enables me. So I was following Dr. Ben Him. I was following Pastor Chris, so yeah, me, all of those things. Now, what am I trying to say? For every evangelist out there, I would suggest don't mm. wait for anybody to invite you because uh, the grace is on you. The word is your parish. 
Set Amen. up your meetings. Set up your crusades. Set up crusades. Don't wait for any pastor to invite you. Go, resource. If any church invites you, that is now addition. That is now addition to your calling. But don't wait for any pastor to wait for you because if you are waiting, just some may not invite you. Some may invite you. For me, when churches invite me, I go in with the apostolic grace. But beyond churches inviting me, I plan my evangelistic meetings and God is glorified. Amen. Amen. Wow. Praise God. So we thank God for, for this experience. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful, you know. There is something that you mentioned there that is very, very good. You said that uh, a pastor was uh, no, no, evangelist. Sometimes God allow you to have a church, you know, and so that you can actually learn what happened. You know what I mean? And that is a revelation. What you say that because when I came, when I started my ministry in Cape Town, my ministry was mm. very successful in Cape Town. You know, as for mm, I, I know I about it. I know about it. You know, my, the church. You know, it was a big church. But after mm. seeing that vision, I, I'm telling you right now. God said go, and I did not want to go, you see. That Maitland venue, it was a beautiful man of God. And uh, mm. so what, what happened, what happened is, uh, so God made us go now. But when we went out, one thing you also say, when you are evangelist, you step in somewhere, there is something that grace that, that just cover. That is that grace that goes with you, you know. I've gone preach uh, all over South Africa and other places. And yeah. most of the time we see, we see a crowd coming. So the one who invites you does not also know where they're coming from, you know. So, yeah. and also uh, what you've also said about to set up your own meeting, what you've also said that to go. And, uh, so I believe that when you go, then that's why the finance also open up. So exactly. when, you don't go, when you don't go, waiting for the finance so is uh, not going to happen. So, so I believe that it's about going. It's about going. So do you have a word for the, the evangelists that have been already like a prophet already, that have been already pastors, eh? the evangelists that have been already pastors, They've been already. Uh, uh, they've been already pastor. They've been already prophet. Because when I was having the ministry, the church, I called one of the evangelists, and uh, it's a woman here in South Africa. Uh, uh, I forgot her name, but if it come away, Tamren, you know, yeah, one of the lady called evangelist Tamren, and she also work with uh, Rena Bonke and what she have her own ministry. When I call her, I told her I'm an evangelist. She says, but if you are evangelist and you have a church, what will happen? Maybe you're going to miss out on your calling, you know? But I was having a church at that time. And later on, uh, I let it go. Uh, I also read the book of uh, Renard Bonke, where he let it go. And so I'm feeling much, much free right now for on the field, you know? So what is your word now or encouragement uh, through our testimonies that we have shared, what is it if somebody is following us, you have been also in that situation, he's already started a church, or he's, a, he's already called himself a bishop, he's already called himself prophet, and then, but inside is evangelist. How, how can we get him back? How, what counsel can you give to that person for him to, to be back into evangelistic ministry? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I have to welcome, I have to acknowledge these people. Uh, Reverend Solomon D.K., sir, he's a great uh, man of God. Uh, uh, my senior, uh, uh, God, uh, God used him in those days to be a blessing all the way from Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. He's online. Mm -hmm. I, I celebrate him, sir. And uh, uh, Pastor Nam, the great man of God from Pretoria. Uh, God bless Pastor Nam. I also saw my friend, uh, uh, Evangelist uh, Ima Ademora. God bless you, man of God. Now, sir, what the question you just asked, I will just make it very brief. And I'm yeah. taking that from the book of uh, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter five, verses twenty-four. So yeah. in January or uh, December last year, January, when the Lord spoke to me about going fully into my evangelistic ministry and forget anything about the pastoral, He gave yeah. me a word. When I okay. asked Him, Lord, are you the one speaking to me? He gave me a word. That is, 
First Thessalonians 5.24. You know what he said? Yes. He said, Faithful is he that has called. Mm. Who also will do it? Yeah, I'm faithful, right. faithful is he that has called. Who also right. will do it? Sir, I want to encourage every evangelist out there, every yeah. prophet that is wrongly placed, pastor wrongly placed, yes. teacher wrongly placed, whosoever you are, whether you are in business, in any career, or in any profession of life, you find yourself, and you discover that there is this passion in you that is... Yeah. That is burning. I mean, that is burning that you discover that where you are is not where you're meant to be. My yeah. answer and my contribution to you today is that it's never too late to make a U-turn. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's never too late to make a U-turn, sir. By the grace of God, my 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 papa's church, where I was raised as a pastor, I, I yeah. started full-time pastoral work. I think that was uh, uh, 99. Ni 1999, I became an assistant pastor. Uh, the year that was in Lagos State, you know, on and on. Now, up until, up until uh, 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 January, December, January, this day, when the Lord said to me, son, yeah. move yeah. into your assignment so that you don't regret Praise it. God. And Apostle Evangelist, I will tell you, when I heeded to the voice of God, I can tell you that between January and this yeah. month of June, yeah. I have seen success, I have, been, I have seen success I have never seen in the last 20 years. Wow, praise God. That's powerful. I have, seen, I, mean, I have seen the hand of God praise I have God. never seen in the last 20 years of my life. What yeah. was the problem? All yeah. these years I was pastoring, I was wrongly placed. I was in a wrong placement. Amen. And nothing frustrates a man that God has called like yeah. wrong alignment. You I cannot be wrongly placed. You cannot be wrongly aligned and expect God to pay. God doesn't pay yeah. you in a wrong alignment. So yeah. what I'm saying in summary is, to any evangelist or any office you find yourself out there, and you discover that there is more to where you are. You discover yeah. that you are wrongly placed. I persuade you today to go back to the Lord and return yeah. back to your original calling. For Amen. faithful is he, faithful is he that has called, who yeah. also will do it, sir. Amen. In, Amen. Our, in our right placement, in our right calling, we are yeah. not the one making it happen. It Amen. is God making it happen. And I can yeah. tell you in finality that in January, you know, I, I was expecting you in Nigeria, right? Yeah, yes. I, I was yes, expecting you in Nigeria by April, if not the lockdown. Yeah. Now, I, I think in, in February, I was in, I was in Ghana. Now, yeah. what I'm trying to say is, uh, when we started the crusade in January, when the Lord said, son, move into your evangelistic assignment, and I obey. Sir, mm. I cannot tell you, I never had anywhere as a ministry we kept $100. There was no way like that. The, the crusade, we, the crusade we, we went into costed us close to, I mean, close to $2,000 or $1.5 or $1,500 or $2,000. I mean, yeah. you know, for the posters and flyers. Yeah. The yeah. church, the church, I can't tell you the church kept about $100. No. But immediately I declared that the Lord said we are going into a crusade. I was surprised. Amen. People Amen. I never expected. People I Amen. personally, I pity them. Sir, money was coming from where I least expected. I saw Amen. overflow. Amen. I, saw money, I saw money to the point I was not the one telling people, it's okay, we are enough. We have done the flyers, about, uh, about 5,000 flyers, posters everywhere, about, about 8,000 flyers, 5,000 posters, you know. The whole thing was massive. I invited key gospel artists. I invited a Mrs. Osinachi, uh, you could, the one that sang the Ekweme. I invited the other guy. They were, I invited mega gospel artists in Abuja, and not just in Abuja, who are internationally known. Why? The provision was massive. What I'm trying mm. to say, for every vision the Lord has given you, there is already a lay down provision. Praise God, praise God, praise but God. But in a wrong office, if you are mm. in a wrong office, you are on mm. your own. Mm. God doesn't pay you in a That's wrong office. True. But God That's delivers. True. God is faithful when you are rightly alive to the purpose of God. God bless you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, men of God. Thank you, men of God. Thank you so much for clarifying and thank you for all the testimony. And uh, I believe today this is the rebirth of the really, the rebirth as the title is, the rebirth of evangelical ministry.
Hold so, on. in closing, we just want to tell every evangelist, because today we're focusing on evangelists. Every evangelist yes, that has been uh, uh, left the evangelical and you've gone into pastoral, you've become a prophet, come back. You've heard today from uh, an apostle evangelist, uh, you go, today you have heard uh, that it is when you step into your calling that the finance come. In the church, you will never raise it up. But if you are evangelist, you step into your calling, your money will come. And men of God, I want to share a small testimony quickly before I finish. You know, when I started my ministry in Greenpoint, we had a big venue there in Greenpoint. Men of I know, God, I know. Yeah, in that venue, there were other venues, smaller one. But we never fool the venue because the bigger one, we never use it. You see, we, they, we were using the smaller one that was inside the, the bigger venue. You know what I mean? Because we were so scared. Then God says to me, do a crusade. And I said to the Lord, please, you're going to kill me because really, I, how is, am I going to do it? You know? And uh, God said, do a crusade. Man of God, the vision was very clear. And uh, mm. I decided, I said, okay, but I'm going to do it. So I, I said to God, but I'm already fine. Just leave me the way I am. He said, no, no, no. You have to do the crusade. Man of God, we took the chair because the, the bigger venue had a lot of chair. We packed that place. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that we don't know where the people going to come from. You see? Wow. 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 And, 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 uh, and uh, so I remember the day I was going to that crusade, I was so scared, man of God. I called one of the usher outside from distance. I say, is there people inside? He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said so funny, yeah. yeah, the Asha start to, to, to teach me. He start to say, he, he start to tell me, it's fine, people will come. He had more faith than me, you know. Wow. And I got inside and I looked, there were nobody, there were just our musicians singing in the empty building. And men of God, I went and sit in the front chair and never look at the back. You understand? Mm. Now, the minute I, I look at the back, it was when they called me to preach. And you know what I saw? The place was packed until there were people standing. And I wow, wow. Myself, you know, I mean, we never fool that place. I'm, I ask myself, how is that possible? You understand? How is that possible? You understand? Oh, men of God. And recently we had a, a crusade at SABC. You know, I believe you know SABC. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. our, our church was just two streets from the SABC. And, uh, you know, we, the place where we were, it is very small compared to the SABC, you know. And <laughs> it was even a problem to fool that place, you understand. Mm -hmm. Now, we take yeah. two streets from where we were. We went to SABC in a bigger venue. Man of God, I'm telling you, the place was packed. Every chair was sitting. I believe every time we step into our calling, I believe right, we, right, right. we are the people that uh, confuse God. It's not God confusing us. We that's are right, the people right, right. who are confusing God and confusing ourselves. So mm. uh, my call is that today, uh, in closing, I also want to say every evangelist, if you are scared of provision, come. You have heard my testimony. You have heard the testimony of uh, Apostle Evangelist uh, Hugo Shugo from Nigeria. You have heard my testimony here in South Africa. And uh, wherever you are, may the Lord speak to you. We've done our job to bring you back. May the Lord Amen. bless you. Amen. Just last word, man of God, if you have it. Amen. Thank you. Say, say what, man of God? If you have a last word, and then we're going to pray for the evangelist. Okay, sir. I, I don't think you have said it all. Uh, I think uh, God has established it, but the final thing I have to say is, yeah. faithful is he that has come, who Amen. also will do it. As yeah. much as we return back to our calling, our original calling, sir, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, above all we think and imagine, according Amen. to the power that works in us.
God is very much ready to deliver. As much as we are wrongly, as much as we are rightly placed and aligned to His purpose. God bless everyone as we get back to God and get back to our place of assignment. Amen. 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 Men of God, can you please pray for the evangelists that they they are wrong placed for the grace of God to come upon them that they will also come back into their calling. Father, I enter into agreement with your son, Apostle Thank Evangelist you. George Mpunga. Father, Amen. we give you praise and we give you glory for what you are doing in this end time. We thank mm. you because of the imminent return of Jesus, so bad to take the saints home. And Father, Amen. we are crying out loud in this broadcast, praying that every evangelist that lost the track, every Amen. evangelist that is wrongly placed, every evangelist that lost it and lost his pathway with the Lord, we are asking this evidence. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let them come. For every evangelist out there who missed God, that the Lord will restore you back to your place of assignment. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have done it. And Father, as we reach out, let the people be ready, waiting for the source to be restored back to the Father. Thank you for what you are doing this season. And bless your servant, Apostle Evangelist Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, men of God, for responding to the invitation. We really appreciate And uh, we believe that at least somebody will follow us. If he's evangelist, he will benefit. May the Lord bless you and bless your wife, your beautiful wife, and your children. May the Lord bless you. We'll see amen. you soon in the future. Amen. Praise God. Have a good day, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Amen. amen.